As we continue looking at different types of quadratic functions, the second type of equation form that we're going to be looking at is what's called the standard form of the equation. Now standard form of a quadratic equation is anything that looks like ax squared plus bx plus c where a cannot equal zero. Now in this, a, which you saw earlier in the vertex form of the equation, will do the same thing. It behaves sort of like slope and helps to dictate whether our parabola opens up or down and how steep it's going to open. Now a quick refresher on that, and I know this table is something that's been shown before, but it is a basis for being able to graph these quickly so it can't be emphasized enough. If we have a series of x values that we are selecting, say 0, 1, 2, 3, and 4, then as we go through and change our a values, different things will happen. In our first example, if a is 1, well, 0 squared times 1 is 0, 1 squared times 1 is 1, 2 squared times 1 is 4, 3 squared times 1 is 9, and 4 squared times 1 is 16. So we're just getting our standard list of numbers. If our a value turns to 2, order of operations tells us that we're going to square our x value and then multiply by a, so in this case 2. 0 squared is 0 times 2 is 0, 1 squared is 1 times 2 is 2, 2 squared is 4 times 2 is 8, 3 squared is 9 times 2 is 18, and 4 squared is 16 times 2 is 32. And of course if a was negative these would all be reversed, or their additive inverses. For a being 3, we'll have 0, 3, 12, 27, and 48, and then if a, if we just have general a, we have ultimately 0 for this first case, but it'd be 0 times a. And then we have 3, no, uh, sorry, 1a, 4a, 9a, and 16a because the square values will always be the same. It's the multiplier that comes after that's changing it. And the reason I only went to the positive side here again is because if we were to plug in negative values for x, when you square a negative, you still get the same positive. So we have a symmetric property about our axis of symmetry. Now, finding the axis of symmetry when we were working with vertex form equations was relatively easy. When we start looking at standard form equations, it gets to be a little bit more complicated. So let's take a look at that real quick. The axis of symmetry, again, basing this off of the general form equation, f of x equals ax squared plus bx plus c. Finding our axis of symmetry is going to involve a formula. Our axis of symmetry is going to be where x equals the opposite of b divided by 2a. So we're going to plug in the values for a and b in their respective places here and simplify. And what this is going to do is give us an x equals equation. So looking at that real quick, when we have an x equals equation, we're looking at anything that shares that x value. If x is some arbitrary positive number here, we want all values where x would be that, and what it's going to be is a vertical line through that point on the x-axis. Now, we draw this in, sketch it in as a vertical line. The axis of symmetry is not a part of the graph that actually shows up. You don't graph the axis of symmetry as part of your final presentation, but you do use it to help guide in finding the symmetry of the rest of the function. So let's look at this from a practical standpoint of actually using a function. So we're going to find the axis of symmetry of g of x equals 3x squared plus 12x minus 2. Now to do this, we're simply going to start with our formula. Our axis of symmetry is x equals negative b over 2a. Well, that's going to be a negative 12, because here's our b. a is here, c is here 
divided by 2 times 3, negative 12 divided by 6, and we get a negative 2. That's the x value for our axis of symmetry. Now along with our axis of symmetry, we also want to find our vertex. Now to find the vertex, this is going to look a little bit odd, but it's a coordinate, of course, just as it was before, and our coordinate is negative b over 2a, f of negative b over 2a. What that means is in order to find the vertex, first you find your axis of symmetry, and then you plug that resulting value back in and find out what you get. So in our function here of g of x, our vertex, we already have the x part of it, Let's find the y, or the output value. What is g of negative 2? That's going to equal 3 times negative 2 squared plus 12 times negative 2 minus 2. That's going to equal negative 2 squared is 4 times 3 is 12 minus, because we have a negative, 12 times 2 is 24 minus 2. 12 minus 24 is a negative 12 minus 2 is a negative 14. So our vertex will be located at negative 2, negative 14. Our a value is positive, so this will open up, and our a value is 3, so we'll be able to move out and up in the fashion that was spoken of earlier, and we'll go over one of those here in a minute. Now, once you have your axis of symmetry, and your vertex, we do actually go into the process of graphing so let's do one where we're graphing it by the rules. So we're going to graph y, which we're a little bit older in our math now, so let's call this h of x. h of x equals 2x squared minus 4x plus 6. My first order of business is to find my axis of symmetry. And that's x equals negative b over 2a. So that's negative, b is negative 4, divided by 2 times 2. So that's 4 divided by 4, which equals 1. So our axis of symmetry will be located at the line x equals 1. So graphing that onto my grid real quick. Then moving down the line to find our vertex, I need to evaluate h of 1, which will be 2 times 1 squared minus 4 times 1 plus 6, which is 2 minus 4 plus 6. 2 minus 4 is a negative 2 plus 6, which is simply 4. So we're going to plot that point on our graph here, and then we are going to start building other points to work with. Now standard is that we, from our vertex, we would move right 1 up 1 squared. Well, our a value is 2, so we're going to move right 1 and up 2 times 1 squared. And we'll do the same for the left, which means we're going to have points here and here. And then anything else is going to be off the graph, so our function will look like this. Simply finding the axis of symmetry, plugging in to locate our vertex, and then following our rules for how A behaves will help us to move. Now, we know that C, sorry, new information here, C in the standard form equation is our y-intercept. Here, C value is 6, and we did intersect the y-axis at the point 0, 06, so that does match with the rest of our work. Being able to use standard form equation is nice. There are some ad advantages to being able to graph and use the vertex form. So how do we convert from one to the other? Specifically, how do we go from standard form to vertex? So we have here y, also known as uh, f of x is equal to a negative, the opposite of x squared plus 4x minus 5. We're going to go through and convert this into a vertex form equation. 
Now, just setting up the form, vertex form is f of x equals a times x minus h squared plus k. So, we know f of x equals, our a value here was negative 1, so we have the opposite of x. That's it. That's all we can do right now. So let's go through and find our axis of symmetry in our vertex. Axis of symmetry is located at x equals negative b over 2a. So this will be a negative 4 over 2 times negative 1 which is negative 4 over negative 2, which is simply 2. So the x part of our vertex is 2. And we go x minus that x portion, so we have x minus 2. Now let's find the y portion. f of x equals the opposite of 2 squared plus 4 times 2 minus 5. Evaluating this, we get the opposite of 4 plus 4 times 2 is 8 minus 5. Negative 4 plus 8 is 4 minus 5 is negative 1. So we get 2 negative 1 as the location of our vertex. So we have f of x equals the opposite of x minus 2 squared minus 1. And there we've done our conversion. Now these will take a little bit of practice and we'll get some practice with them. But go back and review this lesson and come in ready for questions.